The threshold guardians of Twin Peaks can be grouped in terms of aligning with the White Lodge or aligning with the Black Lodge in a manner of speaking. Typically, threshold guardians fulfill such a role in terms of standing between the hero and the secrets or treasures required of the hero in order to continue further along in the story. So they're an integral part on the hero's path because the hero cannot go any further without obtaining certain treasures or certain secrets. However, I want to first mention Deputy Hawk, the Log Lady, and Major Briggs as guardians in their own right as there are some, uh, there's a fair amount of overlap between this archetype and the one of the mentor. These character archetypes can, and sometimes they can't, and sometimes they just won't give away all the secrets that Twin Peaks holds. And there's no doubt in my mind that, you know, these three characters, especially, these are the main mentors of the story, they aren't even scratching the surface as to the secrets that they could they could offer to Cooper. Of course, Agent Cooper has readily uh, been accepted as one of their own in Twin Peaks with his endearing and quirky nature. However, these three characters, despite this, they fulfill this role as threshold guardians to outsiders as well as they are the guardians against the dark emanations from the forest. So they play a very important role in the story, of course. And of course, the Bookhouse Boys are the official, I would say, the official threshold guardians of Twin Peaks by virtue of them having their very own clubhouse and super secret salute. And the most prominent threshold guardians, at least, where Agent Cooper is concerned, are primarily Laura's closest friends and her parents. I've included several spirit characters as well as they seem to know a lot about Laura and some of her friends, especially the lonely soul of Harold Smith. I've even included James in this group, despite the fact that he is pretty basically clueless about Laura's double life. Poor James. And finally, we arrive at the shapeshifter, which I often find the most interesting and complex character archetype of the bunch. This character archetype can be different things to different people. And just like the queen piece in a game of chess, the shapeshifter can move along all like... Just is like a chameleon that can move along just like all the others, taking on one or more traits of all of the other archetypes at will. The shapeshifter remains a mystery even to herself, confounding all understanding to everyone in her path, and at the very same time offering those in her presence something which is attractive and compelling, even if they cannot fully understand why. Of course, this character arch archetype is not to be trusted, even though the hero may be strong and believe they are prepared, they often have no defense against the charms of the shapeshifter. Remember the scene in the Red Room where Laura kisses Agent Cooper? I don't know about you, but Coop seemed to be into it. Now, Laura Palmer, as the main shapeshifter in Twin Peaks, seems to have a fatalistic twin flame in the form of Bob, whom is also a shapeshifter, albeit far less developed as a character. I realize this isn't defined clearly enough in the show, but I get this strange sense that these two characters... There's, there's some sort of odd parallel in some way, even if I can't quite articulate why. They just seem to go together in a very strange way, and not in a good way. But um, I hope that kind of makes sense. I mean, I always got this vibe that the two of them have some sort of 
strange sort of parallel nature in some on some level. Now, the shapeshifter's connection with animals and the realm of spirit is well understood. This is a transcendent archetype which can move freely between worlds as well as assuming many different forms. And, you know, Laura moved between worlds just like Bob did, so there's a lot of parallels there. The shapeshifter is perfect, uh, perfectly at home in the darkness, dwelling in places that most other characters simply could not handle. So there's kind of another strange parallel between these two characters. David Lynch, not ever wanting to have Laura Palmer's murder solved in the story, is a perfect fit for this character archetype because it lends even more mystery to this already elusive and complex character archetype. Who killed Laura Palmer doesn't seem quite as important or interesting a question as what happened to Laura after she died. One thing about the shapeshifter in my mind is that they can and do move between worlds in a way which seems impossible to the rest of us. Even forgetting about the ending of Fire Walk With Me, Laura Palmer's character archetype is the sort which is supernal to the rest. The sort of character which endures great pain and suffering in one world only to move to the next with the capacity of experiencing a completely opposite and new reality, one much better than the one she left behind. At least, that's the impression I get. The shapeshifter is by far my favorite archetype and is the kind of character that we writers love to craft stories around. Well, I think that is all for this video series for now, but I expect to take a deep dive into the third season of Twin Peaks sometime in the future. And just to round this whole thing out, I want to say that to me, character archetypes in stories represent a certain ancient form of psychology which holds up a mirror to our own lives. While being the hero of our own story, we will invariably play out the, all of the different roles at some time in our lives from the perspective of other people. Sometimes we're the shadow, or sometimes we're the shapeshifter or the trickster, depending on the circumstances of who, and of course, uh, not only the circumstance, but who we are happen to be in front of. So to me, great stories like Twin Peaks are really wonderful reminders that this razor's edge we know is life can be both a blessing and a curse simultaneously. But most importantly, instead of being a spectator to life, I like to try and lean into these roles, at least when I can remember to do that, which helps me take life more sincerely and less seriously. If not for any reason, then just to see where it may lead to next. Because for me, at least, it's the mystery and the possibility of the roads ahead and not in having all the answers beforehand. That's where courage is, which is the hero's greatest ally after all. So until next time, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.